if you can hear me, uh, just give me a, a visual yes in the thing. Yeah, and then Andrew will be on right after me. All right, cool. So then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go desktop sharing. I'm gonna do something a little different. I've got some slides, but I actually want to do quite a bit of live teaching with you today. So I just gotta make sure that start desktop sharing here. Hold on. It, for whatever reason, it just takes my PC a second for. There we go. Now it and Omnovi are kind of liking each other. And I'm gonna go close that one. And I want screen six. All right. So let me know when you can. Uh, if you can see my see my screen, Just let me know when you see that. Everybody good? All right, okay. All right, so I've got a, a bunch of different my favorite trades, low risk, high reward type trade setups. First thing I want to do in this talk, I'm the futures guy. Okay, now I will trade anything. I will trade tic tacs or toothpicks if there was a market in it, and I. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to share with you um, some low risk high reward trade setups. I want to do it a little bit different though. What I first want to do is let's go through the futures. Let's do some analysis, see where we think things are at, where they're headed, what they're probably going to do. And um, the volume button is in the lower left hand corner. And then what we'll do is we'll go over some market internals. And I'll show you some things that you can do that in my opinion are low risk high reward trades. Now I by no means want you to think that I'm implying that futures is low risk. Futures is very risky. You're probably going to lose all your money trying to figure out how to do it. When I say low risk high reward, I mean I'm going to be risking four or five ticks in order to make 30 or 40 or 50 ticks. That's what I mean when I'm saying that. Okay. So let's first, I'm going to go over here to the video tab. Welcome to go to um, the first thing you, I'm, the you first should caller. see on your we'll computer, on hold until do the you see a thing arrives. that says Goldman Sachs? Because I'm going to come back over here and then go to the left. And then I'm going to go to, and we'll talk about gaps too, because I know a lot of people like to talk about gaps. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the ES, okay? So the ES, obviously, in the past two days has been beat to death, right? So yeah, Ichimoku, so, and this is Ichimoku, great indicator if you have never used Ichimoku, I'm a huge fan. You know, get you some education on it. Uh, myself and Andrew both have the, two of the best courses out there. I think they're the they are the best courses out there, and they're both really good courses. So on Ichimoku, if the cloud, if the price is above the cloud, that's a good thing. That means you're bullish on that thing. And then I've got the parabolic SAR for stops and stuff. Um, so you can see where uh, the ES sold off, and you see where it bounced off the cloud here. That's how it's supposed to work. So yeah, I'm using a parabolic SAR which are these little blue and magenta dots, which just gives me stop and reverse signals so that I know when, okay, you could potentially short here, and now I know I should be covering down here in the bottom of the cloud. Now, I'm not doing the counter trend trades. I'm more of a trend trader that buys pullbacks or breakouts. I'm not really the counter trend guy. About 70% of my trades are trend trades. About 30% of them are counter trend trades. So if you're using this same theory on low risk, high reward trade setups, I want to go through like how you would do this. So you can see I'm putting an arrow. You see this little uh, arrow here above the first parabolic SAR? On, on that, it's going, hey, heads up, short that. And then you could use a very tight stop loss of the most recent highs. And that's a low risk, high reward trade setup. Now, if it didn't work, obviously you're going to risk a little bit of money and you're going to get stopped out. So the ES is probably going to bounce out of here because it usually bounce off, bounces off the bottom. I'm going to use my, my drawing screen now here and let me know if you can see this because the teleprompter sometimes works awesome and then other days it just goes crazy on me so I'm going to use my pen here do a little Madden drawing so you should be able to see this and I'm going to circle it with my ink okay so you see that area right there that's support this is also support now you're sitting there going well that's wonderful I hear what if I get stopped out? Well, you'll lose money if you get stopped out, and then you won't go long again until you come back down here to this support area. Okay? Does that make sense? So that's a low risk, high reward trade setup. Now, you've had one, two, two down days, two heck of a down days, right? Massive selling, really, really hard. You should be bouncing, and God forbid, you should be bouncing more than, how much is it up? It's not even up much. What is it up? Like, I'm gonna have to check. See how much it's up two bucks. That's pathetic. All right, that's just a dead cat bounce. Anybody ever throw a cat out of a window? 
I, I'm not going to admit or deny that I ever did it when I was a kid, but I, I, that's a dead cat mouse right there. You can see where it should retrace way better than that. Now, if you're going to do a low risk, high reward trade, low risk, high reward, you could short up here and cover here. You could also go long here with a very tight stop loss at the bottom here, and then you could use a Fibonacci from 0.1 to 0.2 as your target right here at 1805. All right. Make sense? So that's the first one. I don't think, you know, and there's nothing wrong with a nice little adjustment. We're due for a sell off. We're due for some profit taking. Let's take a look and see where we're probably going to go on the ES. I'm going to crunch this down really quickly. Original scale. And then I want to see where we, where we could potentially go if we get a little bit more sell off. And a 10 or 15% sell off is definitely within the realm of possibilities. So we could come down here to the bottom of the cloud to 1741 to 1716. So our job as traders is to um, buy when we are uh, told to buy and sell when we're told to sell based upon certain criteria. So you can see in this example that we do have a decent buying opportunity at the high of the cloud with a tight stop loss and then bouncing up to about 1806. If that doesn't work, all right, if that, if that doesn't work, then we will we'll get stopped out of the trade and we'll fall back, fall back, and then we'll buy down here at the bottom of the cloud. If that doesn't work, well, then we're just wrong. And then what we'll do is we'll get on the short, the short train and we'll ride it much, 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 much lower. Okay, so that's the ES. We take a look at the Dow, which is going to be pretty close to the same thing. The Dow, what, look what it did. It gave you some really strategic sell signals. Up here on the par parabolic SAR, look, you got one, two, three here, four, five, six, seven here. So it called the top fairly, fairly decent, right? All of these indicators that I'm showing you are built into every trading platform worth, a, worth their salt. If you don't have these indicators, then you really just don't have a very good trading platform. Is all that uh, is all that means. So you can see you got sell signal, sell, 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 sell. Short, you cover down here at the bottom, the top of the cloud. If you're long. You buy here at the bot at the top of the cloud. Now I know what you're saying. You're probably just going, God, that's a ballsy trade. Not really. You just have to use a tight stop. You don't have to go crazy. And I'm going to show you a couple of intraday trades that you can do too to make your life a little easier. Also, so same type of thing. The exact same analysis on the S&P from this low to that high. It's probably going to retrace to 15.564 to 15.336. Okay. Both directions: low risk, high reward. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, on the other hand here, has a little bit more fall to do. So you can see it is below its turning line and its standard line. It needs to drop down to the top of the cloud before we consider it low risk, high reward. So on the NASDAQ, I would just stay away. There's just no, there's not a real good premium trade setup here. You're right in the middle of the danger zone, so you just want to stay away from that one. Let's take a look at the Russell. On the Russell, Getting close, close but no cigar. You can see also we had a, a, a good strategic little parabolic sell signal here, two of those. Sold off like crazy. Almost touched the top of the cloud. I would say that's good enough for government work. Let's see how close that actually was. The top of the cloud was 11.1462. The bottom of that candle is 11.1658. That's close enough for government work. So just think about these things. And just ask yourself if you can pull these trades off. Do you have what it takes to pull these trades off, or do you just sit there and look at them and watch them happen to you? Okay. So let's take a look at a couple other markets. Let's take a look at the gold market. Now, the gold market, I'm currently short from 1300 and below, and I covered half of my position down here at 1200 And then what I did, in full, let's, let's, this is a great example of one that did not work. Okay. So in this example, you can see that there's an area right here right there see on this one we shorted it as it tagged the cloud and then we covered some of it here and then we got stopped out on the rest as it goes higher so it's still a good shortable area the next shortable area is going to be right here so i'm waiting for it to go up there again and uh short it again once it gets up here now when i'm doing gold i'm going to risk anywhere from three to six to ten points okay that may sound like a lot of points but it's really not. It's it's not that big of a deal because 
when I'm looking to make money on it, I'm, I'm looking to make 20, 40, and 60 points. So I'm looking to make a lot more money than I'm risk. So this is low risk, and this is high reward. All right. What is the best time frame for intraday trade? There is no best. If there was a best, everybody would use it. Uh, there's just whatever you, whatever you, whatever you're into. Um, there, are, there are no best time frames for anything. It's like you know, what's the best, you know, the best hamburger or the best soft drink or the best water. It, there's just a trade is just a trade. A time frame is just a time frame. So don't get hung up on the best. Now I prefer, you know, um, uh, if if I'm do, if I'm using Ichimoku, I like a, t a ten minute, a sixty minute, and a daily. If I'm if I'm scalping the indexes, I like a two minute chart. And on a lot of the other charts, I use a one-minute chart. So it just all depends. It's, it really just depends on what you're really good at trading and the time frame of that. Let's take a look at the crude oil futures here. In crude oil futures, we just got a new sell signal today. What is the name of the indicator that gives you the pink dots? It's called a parabolic SAR. And it's a great way to teach you how to go long and short. Can you explain the SAR? I can. I can definitely explain the parabolic SAR. Let me get through the analysis, and I'll break down these pieces for you really quick, okay? So on crude oil, you can see that we're, we've got a massive downtrend. We sold off into the cloud. We had a sell signal here at the square, and then we covered down here at support. So I'm going to draw this on the chart instead of just pointing it out. I think it'll make more sense to you. So we had a massive sell signal here. We had a counter trend trade long. See the dots? Up in here. We had a sell signal up in here that said, okay, now the trend is going to resume. And then we sold off down in here. We shorted it up in here, short up here. And then you're going to cover up here, down here. The reason you're going to cover is because you've got some nice little support in this area. So you're going to cover. Now you're back into counter trend trade. And now you're about to roll back over. Now since we're breaking 96.18, that's a good sell signal here on crude oil. And we're probably going to go back down here to 94 and then down to 91. Do you usually set up order, uh, limit orders or do you wait for the jump out of the cloud? I do a little bit of both. It depends on what I'm doing, but most of the time I'll do limit orders on stuff like that. All right, let's take a look at the bond market. So the bond market's a little interesting. Uh, and today we were long and we we're lucky enough to make money even with bonds being down 14, 30 seconds. We got them early this morning as the indexes were rolling over. We got long bonds and it worked out fairly well for us. So since we are above the the, the cloud right here, see how we're above? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight it with this square. So we are above the cloud with one, two, three, four, five, six. See this lagging line? It's also above the cloud. That's a check. So I want to stay long 30 year bonds. Okay. And then I also want to stay long 10 year notes. They both about the same thing. Getting more getting more bearish here, yeah. So and the target that I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to target this area right here, about 135 to 136 is what I'm looking for. All right. That's what I'm looking for on bonds. And I'm going to show you a low-risk, high-reward trade setup that you can do in bonds. It's very, very easy to do. If you can count to eight, you can do this trade. Simple, takes absolutely no skill whatsoever to do it. If you can tie your shoe, you can do this trade. I'm going to show you that in just a second. So let's break down these charts a little bit. I'm going to erase some of this stuff, and I'm going to, let's see, let me get a, a blank chart here for you, just so I can have a big, wide open space for you. Let's go right here, and then right here. Do you guys like PowerPoints, or do you like working live without a net? I prefer live without a net. I just think it's more interesting, but I know some people like um, the PowerPoints. So let's take, if you do PowerPoints, it's easier to cherry pick stuff. If you don't do PowerPoint, it's, it's a lot easier to teach real life. So we're going to right click and I'm going to format indicator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the parabolic SAR. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to turn it off format. Here we go. Let's do status. Status. There we go. Okay, close. So when we're looking at Ichimoku, we're looking at Ichimoku here. The first thing you're looking at, I'm a, I'll go ES because it's the most popular. Okay. So the first thing when you're looking at Ichimoku is is price action above or below the cloud. Obviously it's above. And then you can see when it hits the cloud, that's going to act like a natural little mini trampoline. It's going to go boing, 
boing, boing, right? Which is what we're getting right now, okay? So now what I want to do is I'm going to grab another chart, and I'm going to do another workspace, and I'm going to show you just if you just use a parabolic SAR, how easy it is to find low-risk, high-reward trade setup. So this is the ES, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply, right-click, and I'm going to go Insert Analysis Techniques. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the Parabolic SAR, which is on almost every platform, P-A-R. It'll say P-A-R-S-A-R, or it'll say Parabolic SAR. And then I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to show you my settings, too, for it. It's 0.02 and 0.2, true, cyan, magenta, true, dark gray. Now, these dots are going to be too small, so we're going to make them larger for us real quick. We're going to go nice and big so we can see them. So I'm going to teach you the common sense way to use these things. So here's how it goes. So first, obviously, you know that the indexes are in a major uptrend. Can we all agree on that? Well, let's all agree on it that it's in a major uptrend, although we've had two heck of a two sell-off days. It's been really, really nasty, so that's a good thing. Do you see where this little blue dot comes into place? That means a long, and that means you would get long right here at the close of that bar. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to stay long as long as these little blue dots stay below your price action. As soon as the blue dots jump to the other side, right, and give you a magenta dot on top right here, then that's when you're going to exit. So on this trade, if you can just see this, you would have been long here, right here. You've been long right there. And you would have exited your trade right here. So not a bad little trade, right? Notice what this is not going to give you. It's not going to give you the, the dead bottom low, right? And it's not going to give you the dead top either. What it's going to do is it's going to give you a really good meaty trade from this area to that area. So it's going to give you the meat in the middle. So in this case scenario, if you're still in long mode, if we're still in long mode, okay, we're going to do trend trades. Now, They'll get to a point where you can also do some counter trend trades if you want. You don't have to, but you can. So these would be considered counter trend trades, like the ones that we're in we're talking about right now. See the purple dots on top? That means either short it or exit from a long. And then you would stay short until you saw blue dots, and that would tell you to get out. So here's another example. In this example here, you'd be long here, and you'd have stayed long until you exited here. So where do those three six ten uh, three six ten pip stop losses come from? Uh, that would be points, and that would be on gold, not on uh, pips on forex. Does this work on shorter than daily time frames? Yes, it does. Uh, and I'm going to show you really quickly how you can do that. That's exactly how we got into out of our bond trade today. So if you take a look at let's take a look at uh, let's look at another future. Let's go at ES. Let's go a different time frame. Let's go. Uh, let's say two minutes. That's that random. Okay. So I don't know. You tell me. Does it work good? It works pretty good on the first half of the day. The ES was all down. Second half of the day, they kind of recovered a little bit. So from the main part of this morning, you can see from you know nine thirty, ten o'clock, you had sell, 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 and then cover, sell, 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 cover, sell, 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 cover, and then you hear you had sell, cover, and you hear you had sell, cover. Now, at this point, you've got to start thinking like, hey, we're getting a higher low and a higher high. We need to switch, and now we could go long, sell, long, sell, and now we're back in negative territory. Does it make sense? What are the settings, again, for the parabolic SAR? They're just the standard. I don't mess with them any. It's 0 0.02 and 0 0.2, and they're just, a, they're just the standard. So let's walk through something live here really quickly because I think live is way more important than anything else. So we're going to change this chart to a one minute and we'll see exactly how this thing works. So on this chart setup, it, this dot forms up right here. Okay. So if that dot forms up right there, then you're going to say, okay, at the close of that bar, you would have been short. Okay. So you would have been short at 1781. And as it's going lower, now if you're short at 1781, here's where your stop loss would be. Okay. Your stop loss would now be 1783 and a quarter. Does that make sense? So if you're short from this initial setup right there, and then you can go boom, you're short there at 1781 and three quarters, and then you just trail your stop down. 
1783 and a quarter. Now watch this. In one minute, what it's going to do is it's automatically going to trail your stop for you. You just have to manipulate your, plat your, your platform to set it up a way that you need it to work. So watch here for just a minute. Like I said, I always, I always think live is way better than PowerPoint. I'm just going to scrunch this down so we can see. As the price action goes lower and lower, this purple dot is going to strangle out this trade in a minute. And you'll see like this minute will close, and then it'll get a new price bar and it'll go pump, pump. There you go. Now see that? Now we're going to lock in a little bit more. If you were short on this time zone, then you'd make your stop right here. And I'll, I'll change the stop line to red so we'll know what color that is. Okay. The entry line would have been white. Is it making sense so far? Is the sell stop triggered at on the close or above the head? You could do either one. I would do the close just to keep it simple. Hubert, what about adding a TPO? You could also do TPO. That's not a problem. I'm a huge fan of market profile, but market profile is a little bit hard to teach in an hour webinar. So now as you go lower, what are you sitting here thinking? You're sitting there going, oh, man, it's, it's 3.55. We only got five minutes. You could definitely cover here, right, because you got, you got some issues with in five minutes, the stock market's going to close. In 15 minutes, the futures markets are going to close. But what's what's going to happen in one minute? You're also going to get a trailing stop, which is going to lock in more, more, uh, more risk. It's going to keep the risk smaller and smaller. It will never go higher. It will only get tighter and tighter and tighter. So now see how it moved down. So now you can boom. So how many of you in here have an issue with like, man, I just I really don't know what, what's the best stop loss to use. Almost always, the number one thing that I found over, over the years is a lot of people have problems with like picking the entries and exits and picking out what their stops are. Well, this will fix a lot of those issues if you'll just stick to whatever time frame you're going to do. Just don't jump around. Don't go like, okay, I'm going to use a 15 minute. Oh, well, today I'll use a three. Well, to, uh, now I'm going to use a one minute chart. Find the time frame or the tick frame that speaks to you, that does really, really good for you. In other words, the ones that you, you, you're like, all right, I feel comfortable with that. That one, it's not too herky jerky. It's not too peppy. It's, it doesn't act like a chihuahua on amphetamines. It doesn't act like, you know, a little crazy dog. It's not nuts. And then you could say, okay, I, this one moves about right. I'm, I'm cool with that risk. Okay. You can also, you can, you can mesh two time frames. You can get in on a one minute and you could trail a parabolic SAR on a two minute. There's nothing wrong with that. But you just have to figure out what works good for you and make that apply. So here we're getting ready to see another, another uh, one minute chart here. Get ready to close. And then you can see, look here. Boom. Look there. Now our stop is basically at break even. Worst case scenario, you're going to have a break even trade at this point. And you have to do anything about it. You didn't have to worry about you making a good buying or selling decision about whether you think you're a good trader or not. It's the system. It's the setup. It's just a, it's a really me me uh, methodology where it doesn't take a whole lot of thought process. So if you put the cloud on the ES now, it will tell you long or short trades with the SAR. So yeah, so what I try to do is I try to look at the longer time frames to give me the overall trend. And then I'll use the shorter time frames for entries on, on that time frame. So if I know that Let's take bonds, for example. All right, so I'm going to shift from indexes to bonds, okay? So stick with me. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here. I'm going to go to this chart. And I'm going to go to bonds. Hold on. Is that the chart I want? I don't think that is the one I want. Hold on just a second. I got too many, I got too much stuff over. Okay, give me just a second here. Close that workspace. No. Okay. You got that one. Boy, I got all kinds of things popping up. All right, so all right, let's go at US, okay? So at US, I would say that I am bullish on bonds because they are above the cloud and the lagging line is above the cloud, okay? So is this being recorded? Yes, it's being recorded. So then what I want to do is I'm going to shift over to a smaller time frame, okay? Smaller time frame. Now look at this trade. Even before we go back to the bond market, look, now you what your trade is on the other side of your entry, it's on the other side of your entry, so now you're locking in profit. See how it works? And now look here. Now you're locking in. Now you're going to lock in some more profit, right? You're locking in some more profit. Make sure I get this right. right. There, here you go. Settings on cloud are the default. There's nothing special about them. It's just default. It's just really just knowing how to use them. Now look, nice little sell-off. It looks like we're going to get jiggy with it here into the close. Uh, 3.59, 4 o'clock, stock market's calling, closing. And the index futures are going to close out on their lows today, look like. Let me double check that. Not on the lows, but boy, they're not 
far off of them. 78, 67. They could still they could still get a nice little sell off. Okay. Uh, I don't usually use Ichimoku on anything smaller than a time a, a, a ten minute time frame. You can go lower if you want though. Um, I use it like a 10 minute, a 60 minute, and a daily. Now look here, watch. The stop loss, we're going to trail it here again. It's going to close, and it's going to get tighter and tighter on this S&P trade. Where was the entry? First little purple dot at the close of that candle right there. First little purple dot, short there. Now watch what we're going to do. Trail the stop down. So your original short would have been 1781 and three quarters, and your stop loss is 1780. Is there anything wrong with just going ahead and exiting now that the stock market is closed? No. So you could go ahead and you could go ahead and liquidate your trade and cover it if you wanted to from this point right here. So you could lock in 81 to 76. Uh, Sierra has it too. So yeah. So that's how you do some low risk, high reward trades on index futures. So remember what we were talking about on the bond market. Uh, SAR ranking. SAR is ranking. Is ranking. Well, no, nothing's going to work really good in a ranging market. Nothing works really good on a ranging market ever. It's the hardest thing to, the hardest thing to do is, is range-bound market. So, so the first thing that we had, remember, in the thing that we looked at just a minute. I'm going to remove this horizontal line. It's driving me bonkers. Hold on. That little thing just keeps on jumping around. Watch it. There we go. Now that pop-up will leave us alone for a minute. All right. So we know that the bond market is in a daily uptrend. So then what I want to do is on the bond market, let's go at US, okay? On the bond market, this morning when we were trading earlier, what we noticed is the, the market was in a daily uptrend, okay? We were in a daily uptrend. And what, here are some really good tips for you in the bond market, okay? If you know it's in a daily uptrend, then write down these notes because these are important. This is a low risk, high reward trade setup. If the bonds have moved less than 15 ticks, then a 8 tick pullback is a good trade. If the bonds have moved more than 15 ticks, and actually if they move about one full point, so just say 32 ticks, okay, a 16 tick is a good pullback. I'm going to show you what I mean here in just a second. So in the bond market, the bond market is very methodical. And since we knew that the bond market opened up here and we had a nice little run up, okay, had a nice little run up, we know from this high water mark right here, we know from this high water mark, that's the high at 133 and 230 seconds. Then what is 133 and 230 seconds minus 8? What will that be? Somebody do the math for me really quick. You may know. I did the trade by suck at fractions. What will if it's eight ticks lower than one thirty three and two thirty seconds? So would it be twenty one? Twenty five? What's gonna be? Come on, we gotta have some math majors in here. Come on, somebody, earn, earn some cash here. What's it gonna be? I mean, I can do it with this. Twenty six, yeah. Twenty six. Lord, look at all the answers here, and we're all trying to trade. How's that possible? All right, so let's do 125, 126. Let's do this. Is everybody cool with that is a tick right there? That would be one, okay? This will be two. Does everybody see that? This will be three. This will be four. This will be five. This will be six. This will be seven. And this will be eight. Is everybody cool? So 131 and 230 seconds. And if we subtract eight ticks, if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do we all agree that it is 132 and 26, 30 seconds? Can we all agree on that? That's what we're going to call it. Okay. So from this top... From this top, right here, that was our high water mark. We believe bonds to be in a major daily uptrend. So what we're going to do is we're going to let it rally a little bit, and then what we're going to do is we're going to let it pull back eight ticks, and we're going to buy it at 130 and 26.30 seconds. Okay? 
So if we step in here and buy this, then what we're doing is we're risking five ticks. Now, we didn't get really anywhere near five ticks. And then what we did is we ended up flipping it out, I believe, up in here earlier this morning. So remember, eight or 16 ticks. On a major uptrend on bonds, you have a major uptrend, then you're going to try to buy it back at an eight tick, eight tick pullback. Same thing. If you've got a major uptrend in bonds and they've already moved the full point, then you're going to try to you're going to try to buy those on a pullback on 16 ticks. So that's a low risk, high reward trade setup. Now let's go back into the e-minis because I know a lot of you guys are e-mini junkies, and uh, I can I can relate. I traded e-minis for ever in a day. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some low risk, high reward entries that you can do off of the e-minis. And a couple of them are going to have to do with uh, trend reading and a couple of them, uh, well, how many ticks on the bonds? On the ticks, I usually, on the bonds, I usually risk five ticks to try to make 32 on that one. I think we made, uh, five ticks, we made, I don't know, eight or nine ticks, something like that, if I can remember from this morning. So if you're looking at the e-minis, Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, or Russell, I'm going to teach you a really great way to increase your odds of getting really, really good entries, okay? So the first thing that you want to do is you put the tick, the cash sign T-I-C-K, and all the tick is is it's the RPM gauge of the market, okay? RPM gauge of the market, RPM gauge of the market. First thing when it opens, it's your job to figure out where the range of it is on that day. So there's there's several lines that you want to put on your tick chart, okay? So the first one is the zero line. Can you see the zero line here? And then the second one is um, plus 600, and then plus 800, and then plus 1,000. Then you're also going to want to put minus 600, minus 800, and then minus 1,000. Those are going to be your levels, your support and resistance levels for known areas of where the tick will react. Okay. Now, any stock or option is usually a really good underline of futures action. So 70% of their move is related to usually the futures move in that thing. So what we're going to do, since I'm the futures guy for this talk, we're going to talk about the range of the tick and how to use it for low-risk, high-reward trade setups. Okay. So the first thing when you open up, you see this right here. You see the range of the tick that I've kind of got hammered in right here? So this is the range that we had today. This was the high, and these were the lows, first thing this morning. And then what I said is like, okay, now if we break out of that little box, and those ranges were, they were about 400 and 400. 400 to the high side, 400 to the low side. We broke out to the low side first, so we're probably going to go to 600, here on 600, and then 800, and then, huh, look here, minus 1,000. Here's, here's, the, here's the good stuff. On your first minus 1,000 tick reading, I know it's a sucky drawing of 1,000, you're going to go long, okay? You're going to go long, and you're going to try to hold that thing until it gets to about the zero line, and then you can flip it out, okay? If you come back and you revisit the second minus 1,000 tick reading, then you know you're probably going to sell off more, okay? So this is your second minus 1,000 tick reading, and think about these as, as extremes. So the first one you go long, the second one you don't go long on. After you get a minus 1,000 tick reading, you let it come up, bounce up, and you short it at the zero line. Or you short it at ticket number one or ticket number two, which is you can see these white lines when they come up and they start hooking, they hook over. Now this, this little squiggly white line that I have on here is a one period moving average is all that is. There's nothing special about it. The same exact same thing here on... The upside, you can see it breaks up to the upside. Boom, minus 1,000 tick reading. That's a short signal. You don't have to risk a ton of capital to see if that thing's going to work out for you if it's going to roll back over. Now, you also had another plus 1,000 tick reading. And on this example, you're like, hmm, well, I can't short that because it's the second one. So I'm either going to have to buy it here, here, or here to see if it's going to bounce for me. And those are some really good ways that you can use the tick to your advantage, okay? So let's go over here and see where the Dow and the S&P and everything's closing at really quickly. So we can see here on the Dow, and then like I said, I like a two-minute chart. And you can see, the reason I like a two-minute chart in the Dow is, for me, it just gives you a lot of really clean signals. You could use it probably on the S&P too, 
But you can notice here, look at the parabolic SAR. We had a gap up, okay? It filled a half a gap fill, and then it, then it tested the high. We put a double, topple, a double top and then a triple top here in. And then what do you notice right here? Counter trend trade, right? Nice, good short, and then look here. Good cover point, and look here. Nice little short, and then good cover point. Nice, good short. Oh, here we go. Now a good little trade. Nice short there. Good cover here. Nice short here. And then good cover here. You can also use this with the tick. So you see how clean that is? It's not hard to do. Now, one thing that I don't recommend that you do, whatever you do, don't do this. Don't go long, short, short, long, long, short. Don't do this. Don't go long. Cover, short, cover, short, cover, long, out, long, out long don't do that your account will not like you for that what you want to do is figure out which direction you're going that day all right and it's not hard to do let the market tell you which direction that is but don't whatever you do do not do this don't go don't do this right here it's just your account will hate you and you're not going to really like yourself either don't go long short long short 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 long short you just you're really not committed to anything and you're not standing true to a trade, and you end up falling prey to just every little market whim. Um, you could put a you could you could put an Ichimoku on a two minute chart. Yeah, look here, nice little sell off into the end of the day. Parabolic SAR two minute, still nice little trail stop, right? So let's go back over here to that one that we were looking at on a one minute for you earlier, and see how it's kind of meshing up for you. I'm gonna move it over to the right and see where we came in and on that trade. Okay, there's one more over. All right, and we're going to change it to at, at ES. So at ES, so there we go. So look here where your trade would be at. So remember where you'd trail it down, trail it down, trail it down? Boom, look at there. So not a bad little profit, right? On a free indicator, very low risk, very high reward. And do you see where you'd have, look, you'd have got in here at 1781 and three quarters, and you would have covered... When you got to uh, 1775, it would have stopped you out, basically. It stopped you out. As soon as that purple turned to light blue, boom, you're out. Does that make sense? Hopefully, I'm not confusing you. And I know I talk fast just because I'm, I get really excited about this stuff because I'm always you know, doing it and trading it and teaching other people how to do it. So I'm going to open it up for questions really quick here while I give my voice a breast. Um, I'm getting a trade station event alert when I insert you need more you need more spaces to the right increase your spaces to the right by 30 I don't under explain I don't understand the entry can you explain one more time so here's the entry you see this purple dot so you already had it pegged as going lower right you said lower so the purple dot is is put on here let me show you I'm gonna try to zoom in so you can see it I do use the standard setting test. Do you do you actually trade the tick by just applying it to the ES or stock? You can definitely do that, yeah. So the entry is from this parabolic SAR. Parabolic SAR stands for stop and reverse. You don't want to go stop and reverse, though. You want to go in the direction of our overall trend. So we've pegged the S&P is going down here in the afternoon, right? So this was a long signal, blue, 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 and then it goes boop, out. So, th so that's a short signal. And you see that purple dot? At the close of that candlestick, it's going, hey, heads up. We now have overhead resistance. So you short on that, okay, and then you just trail it and trail it and trail it. And then and for the longest time, we were negative, 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 and it said, boop, and then we got positive. So let's just do it in reverse, okay? Let's do it. We got, we got a few more minutes here. We got a couple more minutes. So let's say that we were, let's say that we were crazy and we're like, we're going to trade the last few minutes on the S&P. Well, your entry would be right here. Does everybody see that? And your stop would be right here. The first one would have been, your first entry would have been right here. So you would have been long on this blue dot right here a few minutes ago. One, two, three, four, five, six minutes ago. At 1774 and a quarter, you would have been long. Your stop loss would have been this. Now we've got to bump the stop loss up. See how it's kind of trailing it there? Now we only have a few minutes. We have less than a minute left. But you can see, and then you just execute the trade. 
Parabolic moves and changes dynamic. Uh, so do you wait for the formation of a stick? You can. Yeah, you definitely have to wait for it to close. Yeah. Uh, do you trade these strategies yourself and for how long? Yes, I do use the parabolic F SAR, and I've been using it for years and years. I've been teaching people a lot more about it over the past couple of years because it's been helping people um, get in some really good entries and exits and actually helping more trail the stop. Once they're in a good trade, it's actually squeezing a, a little bit more juice out of the berry for them. So it's been working out really good. So a lot of people are like, is the squeeze worth the juice? Is, is a lot of stuff that we'll talk about. Um, but there you see, now you're going to trail your stop up just a little bit more here as soon as it closes. But we're getting ready to close, and there's the futures close. So that's it. Uh, what is the ESINX? ESINX is program buying and selling. It'll tell you when a, a bank of computers are, are program buying and selling the market. Basket of stocks in the S&P 500. Hubert Ichimo cool course is excellent. Thank you, Toby. Appreciate it. Let's go back over here. I'm going to teach you one more low-risk, high-reward trade setup. It's kind of like having tomorrow's newspaper today. Okay. Now, it doesn't work. It's not, it does, it's not a high-frequency trade. Uh, it works in the method of it's, it's a real good trade. In other words, it doesn't have a high number of trades in a month, but when it works, it's a really good trade. So... Uh, it's called a trend trade. It's called a crescendo trade. And I want to show you how that works, okay? So there's two different trend trades. There's an intraday trend trade, and then there's an overnight trend trade, okay? This, this strategy does take some cojones in order for you to pull off. You're going to have to be long overnight. It's a long only trade. So let me show you how this works. At any time when you have a massive sell-off, okay, if you have a massive sell-off, uh, like you had here, then what you do, and if you have a trend that closes above 1.50, then you go long, except on Friday. Don't do it on Friday because you don't want the risk over the weekend, okay? Now, so it usually means one of two different things. And when I say this, you're going to like, duh, no joke. So if you get a trend trade that closes, let me show you, even though I don't do them on Friday, let me show you the example. You see where the trend closed above 1.50 here on Friday? Well, what it forecasts is it tells you is like, hey, you better have a big gap up tomorrow or a significant gap up because if you don't, the market's going to get smoked. All right? So let's take a look at it and see how it did on Thursday. We had a nasty little sell-off, right? The trend actually opened up above 2 and stayed above 1.5. That's not really what you're looking for. I know you're going to sit there going, but no, it qualifies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't really qualify because it's a massive gap down. It opens above 1.5 and stays above 1.5. That's not what you're looking for. Here's what you're looking for for a low-risk, high-reward trade setup. What you're looking for, and this is also what you're not looking for, see how the market opened here and closed here? That's a positive close. You don't want that. What you want is you want a market that opens up, sells off like crazy, and then you get a trend trade above 1.50. Okay, so this one opened up here, closed up here. That's a positive close. It doesn't even fit the rule. Okay, so what you're looking for is this trade right here. Right. Now here is a perfect trade. Okay, so pay attention. It doesn't happen real often, but when it happens, it tends to be a really good profitable trade for you. So you can see you had a nice little gap down, nothing major, and then you had a test of the high, and then you took out the lows, and then all of a sudden, you just started selling off like crazy, okay? And notice where the trend started here, and it closed. Where did it close? Above 1.50. So what happens here is the next day, you had better be gapping up. And when you gap up, here's what you're going to do. So on this situation right here, there's three different times that you could do this trade. You can either do it at 4 o'clock, okay, because that's when the stock market closes. You can do it at 4.14. Oh, 414, just prior to the futures market close, or you can do it in the Globex session. Now, it's going to be different for different futures markets. Someone's going to be five, someone's going to be six, someone's going to be eight. Depends on what futures market you're trading, okay? So what you do is you go long right here, and I usually use a 40-point stop loss on the Dow, which means about four points on the S&P, and then as soon as the market opens up, I sell half of it, okay? And then I start to trail my stop, now, hopefully, you don't get stopped out here, and then hopefully, you kind of get along for some of this ride there. So it's called a crescendo trade setup, crescendo trade setup.
So that's another low risk, high reward trade setup. So I got a lot of these in different markets that I trade uh, on the crescendo trade setup, on the tick extremes and stuff like that. And I've been trading the futures markets for 20 plus years now. So there's a lot of little tips and tricks that you use. Like you don't always have to be here in front of the machine if you don't want to. I mean, all of us have more important things to do to stare at monitors and watch price action all day long. Um, there's certain trades that when initiated, you just have a better low risk, high reward trade setup in my, in my opinion. So what I'm going to do here, um, hey, Jeanette, how much time do I have? I don't know because I don't see the clock. Ten minutes. All right. Yeah. Ten minutes. All right. Cool. So I'm going to open it up to questions. If you guys want me to take a look at your individual futures markets, I also do stocks. Like I said, I'll trade anything that moves. If you guys want some advice, before I do that, I want to give you guys a special offer here. Okay. So we're going to be doing a master class. All three of us that are on this webinar right now are going to be doing a master class for you guys. And it's going to be on futures, options, and stocks. It's going to be February the 22nd. It's going to be 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Each one of us is going to take an hour and a half, two hours, something like that, to cover a topic. Okay. And it's going to be, I'm going to be teaching you more low risk, high reward setups in the futures market using simple chart formations. Andrew's going to be teaching you uh, unusual options activity and the mo using the most powerful indicator, which is going to be the Ichimoku, which I've pretty much showcased you a little bit already. And uh, and then we got Johnny Aussie. I just wish I could talk like Johnny Aussie. If my accent would be like his, I, it, that would be awesome, but it's not. Uh, uh, scanning the entire stock market in 15 minutes uh, for for smart money and that no one else is teaching. All right, so three trading professionals for six powerful hours. And if you want to come to this event, I'm going to give you a hyperlink right here, and I think they'll post it for you too. So it's going to be TradeThirsty.com, which is going to be one of Jeanette's new companies that me and uh, Jeanette are kind of partnering up on. Um, so if you guys know Jeanette, you know it'll be a high-quality event because she's going to be running it. And Morgan said he would help us help us promote the event. There's the link right there. So it's TradeThirsty.com forward slash master. TradeThirsty.com forward slash master. Price is only going to be two ninety seven. We will record it, and we will send you the recordings via a download link after the event. So if you can't attend, don't worry about it. We will record it. So the recording will be available for you online on an online resource area. Um, what should I do if Apple gaps down? Well, Bill, are you long or are you short? I don't really know. Um, it, would, it would depend totally on what you're in right now. And whether you're long or short, I don't really know which way you're playing it. Be careful. Like, don't, don't be gunslingers, guys. Don't be gunslingers and don't be gamblers. On um, on trading, it's a great way to burn up through a lot of capital and blow out your account. So just be really, really careful on on trading earnings unless you really know what you're doing. Great to hear your voice again. Much thanks for the free seminar. You think YM will bounce and resume the trend? Are you watching for a trend confirmation? So um, seeing as the Ken Kenny Rogers tune, that's funny. Uh, on the on the index futures, I, you know, I thought we would bounce more than we did today. Um, so we'll probably get a little bit more of a sell-off. I think you're okay buying a little down here on the top of the cloud on all these index futures, except the NASDAQ and the Russell, they look stronger, so I would leave those alone. They, they, they actually, they're kind of in the danger zone. I don't think there's anything wrong with buying either S&P or Dow here with tight stops to see if they're going to bounce a little bit more. It makes sense to me. Okay. So here's the link, tradethirsty.com forward slash master. Has the uh, XAU USD started into an uptrend? Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a second. I just want to keep your, your your slide up here so you have the link, and um, you can also uh, call the office, I believe. Let me uh, give you the telephone number here. Uh, I always forget our telephone number. I'm going to type it in here for you. Okay, area code eight five nine nine six three three four four five. Right there, you go. So my people are standing by, Jared and Susanna are right behind me. So if you want to call them, you can call them. Uh, they'll take really good care of you. And then, I'll, like I said, uh, what software is being used for scanning? I think it's online software, Brian. Uh, it'll be free online software that he'll show you so you won't have to pay a, a third party, is my understanding uh, on that. Okay. All right. So I'm going, I think i got five or six more minutes here until Jeanette kicks me. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to take your questions here on individual stocks. You throw out stocks, options, futures, whatever you got here. I'll tell you what the underlying should do here. There you go. Uh, your accent's going to Starbucks, SBUX is in a massive downtrend. Short it and be done with it. That is a short below the cloud. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how powerful this is. I'm going to put the parabolic back on it here for you. Insert analysis technique. Actually, I need to have the other channel on there. Right click, format analysis technique. And I can just turn it back on status. This in here I can just remove. There we go. All right, so now you can see, look. It's below the cloud. Parabolic SAR is above it. Below the cloud. Looking good. Lower. Uh, Starbucks looks good. It does have a little support at 70, though. Uh, Lululemon is smoking short. Lululemon, ever since it had this massive gap down, well, ever since it's below the cloud, it's been a good, it's been a good short. Parabolic SAR to the downside, lower. It's, 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 it's in really technical just death. It's probably going to 40. Uh, G R G R M C G R M C. Uh, oh, I, I did it wrong. Uh, G M C R G M C R dyslexic. G M C R is a decent long. It's above the cloud. Um, you've got a little bit of uh, in here. I'd wait until it went back up through eighty bucks. So S B S. SBX is a, SBS is a short below. It's probably going to eight bucks. Um, Caterpillar, Caterpillar looks pretty good. Caterpillar is above the cloud. The lagging line is above the cloud. You can see how it bounced off of the cloud there. Looks really good to the high side. Uh, I know AMD below the cloud, but is the cloud trading? Let's go AMD. AMD. AMD is kind of a dying business. But yeah, the cloud is it's below the cloud, and the lagging lines below the cloud. That's just not a good sign for AMD. Plus, it's three dollars. It's kind of hard to trade. Alcoa will be a long. Alcoa is a long. It's above the cloud. Lagging line. Trail your stop. Your stop should be eleven twenty four or ten ninety nine. EOG. Hold on. EOG. EOG is a short, and your stop would be one seventy three, and it's probably going to go to one fifty five. Open for Tick Extreme Huber. What is the time frame in you getting range? I usually use a one minute on the Tick Extremes. Yep. One minute. W Y N N. W Y N N. Let's see here. All right. W Y N N is the a, it's a long, but it's probably going to fall to the top of the cloud here. So it would be a counter trend trade short. With the target of about 180. Like I said, guys, here's your link. I think Andrew's up next. Uh, can you explain the basics of Ichimoku? Uh, Andrew, I think, will be in in his trading unusual options activity using the most powerful indicator available. He'll probably be going over some of the some of the Ichimoku. So I'll leave that to him on that one. Um, Mastercard is a long at the cloud here. I would be a buyer with the bottom of the cloud being the stop. So uh, that's it for me today, guys. Uh, good luck. Hope it helps. Thanks for showing up on the webinar. I will be here later uh, at the at the end of it with uh, with Andrew, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Andrew. Here is your link one more time, and here's your slide. Your slide is the Master's Class Futures, Options, and Stocks, February the 22nd at 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Uh, three speakers. Uh, uh, myself, I will be teaching low risk, high reward trade setups on futures using simple chart formations. Andrew will be teaching uh, trading unusual options activity using the most powerful indicator available. And uh, Johnny Aussie will be teaching 15 minutes for the smart money no one else teaches. It's 297. It's tradethirsty.com forward slash master. Okie doke. Andrew, it's all yours, my friend.